Welcome to Salcedo Paranormal. This is episode 517, and tonight I'll be sharing true paranormal stories from the web. As always, you can find all episodes of the show, along with links to social media and other ways to contact me, at the podcast page, and that is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S-A-L-S-I-D-O, paranormal.podbean.com. Always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or stories of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or from others that you trust. Happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. Thank you all for listening, whether you are here for the live streams on Discord or if you listen to the podcast or YouTube feeds or on the Trouble Minds radio network, KUAP Digital Broadcasting. There you can hear replays of two episodes of the show every night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, right before Trouble Minds Radio comes on. As always, I want to thank Michael Strange, host of Trouble Minds Radio, as well as Liam Martin, host of the Exile Minds podcast, for producing the shows and putting them up on the station, along with the music that you hear there. If you'd like to support the show, there are some different ways to do that. You can always Share the show with others and rate and review it on your podcast platform of choice. Uh, you can also find books I've written, uh, paranormal fiction and nonfiction, over on Amazon. You can join my Patreon page, uh, where there will be, starting this month, uh, probably in the next week or so, I'll be putting up uh, one extra episode of uh, True Paranormal Stories from the Web every month. And um, that is available to all membership tier levels there. Or if you just want to make a one-time donation, you can do that through PayPal. I apologize for not having other uh, options for that, but uh, there are reasons due to uh, my low vision and technical difficulties I've had with other things before. So um, help is always appreciated, but never expected. But there are expenses in making these shows, uh, such as research material and, uh, in some cases, uh, travel expenses. Uh, no plans as of right now for any traveling, but um, still always trying to save up for, for those things, and that is uh, uh, exceptionally hard these days. So uh, any help would be appreciated, uh, especially if you want to make the show better um, in your own way and by helping out with those things. So I um, think that takes care of everything. Thank you all for being here and listening. Hopefully uh, everyone in the stream can hear me okay. Um, I had to change one I had to change the way I start the streams to get it to work. So um, if anyone is there in the live chat noticed some, something different and how I started, that is why. I don't know um, why things had to change, but I have to do what I have to do to get these things going. So um, I think that takes care of everything. And uh, I can get to the stories here. <clears throat> so let me see here. Thank you all for being here, as, as I always say. Um, it's good to be back on a regular schedule again after a couple months of only doing a couple episodes here and there. And uh, it's nice to be back here again doing these every week. So um, going to the first story. This one, uh, let me find my, where I'm at. Okay. This one says, this happened when I was around 10 years old. I was sitting in the living room late at night watching TV in a recliner placed in the middle of the room with the TV sideways to the windows. It wasn't a school night, which is why I was up so late. My parents and brother were all asleep. The show went to commercial, so I looked out the window. Although my family often left the porch light on, it was off on this night, but I saw a silhouette of a man walking on the porch. I couldn't see any details, but it looked like a man. But we lived on a dead-end road in the woods. It seemed unusual for someone to be on the porch. Not thinking anything of my own safety, I unlocked the front door and went outside to check. But no one was there, and no sounds of footsteps. 
I don't know how long it took to get outside, but it wasn't far to go either. I want to say it was a man who hid when the door opened, but I still don't know for sure. And that's where that story ends. Um, it's amazing how many similar stories there are out there from people that have experiences in places that are relatively uh, sort of not uh, relatively set off from the rest of uh, civilization in a way. Um, just basically out in the middle of woods or in the middle of nature where there's not, um, doesn't seem like there'd be a lot of people around. I wonder that they do mention that they don't think they took a lot. They took them long to get outside. Um, so, I mean, it's always possible it could have been a regular person, but it is odd that the writer there wasn't able to find any sign of them at all. Um, I'm wondering how much noise there was in the forest going on at the time. Maybe that could have masked the sound of footsteps, possibly, uh, because nature does make its own all of its own noises. Uh, but if you're listening for that, then I don't know. I guess it would depend on what kind of what the con conditions were and what the landscape was around that uh, that house. So um, it's possible that 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 they the writer there saw some kind of an apparition. Um, I'm wondering if they normally hear footsteps on the porch when someone is outside, or not uh, from inside. I think it, that also depends on the construction of the house and everything, and um, different different factors like that. So that's also something to consider. Uh, if they normally didn't hear any sounds, then then yeah, it could still be maybe a person, possibly. <coughs> Excuse me, but um, if they did usually hear sounds, then that would maybe indicate something more unusual going on there. And again, just so many similar stories out there of um people that are just in the woods or in basically on mountains or just in nature, just um, away from any kind of cities or anything like that, that hear or see things that don't make sense. Uh, so always, those are always amazing stories to find, accounts to find of uh, experiences. And that's a fairly simple one overall. There's, I've heard of uh, much more repetitive events and, and um, extreme situations sometimes, but so I'm glad that was that one was not anything major, but still, it's amazing when you have a sighting that you can't really explain. Um, it does it's it is startling. So uh, moving on to the next story here. Let's see. So uh, this one says, um, okay, thought I was reading the same one for a second, but I wasn't. Says this one. This happened when I was around thirteen. My brother came home from a party at around three a.m. and went to his room, rearranging his bed as it was hot in the house, which woke me up. So I went to the hall, and then the kitchen, for some water. The kitchen sink faces a window, that looks out to the backyard. While drinking some water, I saw a tall white figure near a tree with a clothesline where our family usually hung our clothes to dry. At first I thought it was a forgotten bathrobe and thought nothing else of it as I finished my drink of water. I went back to my room after that. I saw my father's motorcycle, which he kept in the house, and the only bathrobe in the house uh, I guess it was on that they mean there, which meant it was not outside. I uh, I shivered, and typo there, and ran back to my room, hid in my sheets, and forced myself to sleep. My brother asked what was wrong, but I just wanted to sleep. The next day, I asked my mom about the bathrobe, and she said she brought it inside, 
but put it on my father's motorcycle to dry that night. That's when I realized that I must have seen a ghost. And um, that's where that one ends. Uh, maybe I I just don't know a lot about motor- motorcycles, but I've never heard of anyone bringing it inside their house and keeping it in their hallway. But um, beyond that, uh, I, I'm i wondering what the person saw there, what the writer saw there. Um, let me see here. Okay. Uh, because if it wasn't what they thought it was, then what was it? Um, a white figure... I'm wondering what the shape of the figure was. I mean, obviously somewhat humanoid, but also, I mean, it almost sounds like a, like a traditional ghost, like the whole, I mean, if you think of like a bathrobe, it's almost like a, could almost look similar to like a sheet, like you see in movies and things. But there's also, I mean, plenty of apparitions that do appear to be wearing white clothes. Or appear to just be masses of white light or energy, and that have a human humanoid shape. So there's something odd about all of that. Um, those connections there, but um, and then the reaction that the, that the writer there had is also not uncommon when they sort of realize that maybe they were looking at something that um, they couldn't explain. It's amazing how often you find that and how often that happens where people, you you wouldn't think it'd be possible to go to sleep after having an experience like that. But it happens over and over again. It's happened to me before a couple of times, mainly just the one time. Uh, I've I've told the story before about being at my cousin's house um, and uncle's house when I was a kid and seeing something that uh, was somewhat frightening. And, but I was, Basically, in a in a bedroom with this, uh, this was the uh, giant white, well, not giant, this bright uh, white light with a uh, cat's claw in the middle of it that floated around the house at times. Apparently, um, it was it had shown up in the bedroom, my my cousin's bedroom, and uh, had some other kind of weird apparitions along with it in front of it that it seemed to generate of. Um, Almost like, I'm sorry for those that have heard this a million times before, but almost like mannequin arms and legs, like limbs, uh, but not, but also they looked like they were not mannequin, not, not, um, plastic. They looked like they were organic. Uh, luckily they weren't, um, they weren't, it wasn't gory in any way, but it was still very startling and frightening in a way to, uh, to see those things, those four things, two, two legs, two, ar- two arms, floating between me and this, this thing. And so obviously I, I couldn't really, the room only had one door coming and going, and it was in front of this door, and so I was kind of stuck there. Um, so I just closed my eyes and tried not to focus on it, and somehow eventually fell asleep. So it is a thing that happens in so many accounts of experiences. Um, whether it's with sort of apparitions or in some cases, uh, things that appear to be almost like cryptids or even, uh, aliens. And again, these are all just kind of words to dis- to try to describe things. Um, and so they can be that they can be sort of inaccurate in trying to describe something in just one word, but this does seem to happen across the board with weird experiences. So um, as far as the different types of experiences go. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't know what the person saw there, but it sounds like it was something, someone out in the yard. And uh, don't know, don't know what was going on there. But that's amazing. That's two stories of sightings. And again, a lot of times with these stories, I find them, um, I try to always be way ahead on, on these stories for these shows. So I had forgotten that those two were sort of right next to each other. Also, I apologize if you all can hear my uh, my cat snoring. Um, it's kind of funny, but also probably not the best when you're trying to listen to a podcast. But not much I can do about that. Um, moving on to the next story here. And uh, this one says... It seems that I have a sensitivity to ghosts. 
I worked in a well-known chain of stores in the deli. This happened near the end of one night with a co-worker. They were washing dishes in the back while I was sanitizing and washing the floor in the front near the hot case, the hot food case, I guess they mean. The front end was soaked, but there was a dry spot close to the door to the hot case with a large barefoot print of water in it. I'm sure it wasn't the co-worker and other non-Delhi associates would have had to come around, making it unlikely. Although the store wasn't closed, it was very quiet with hardly anyone around at about 9 p.m. on a weeknight. I can't imagine how anyone walking around barefoot would not have been noticed or why they would do such a thing. That same night, I also saw a man testing out one of the scales in the deli. He was wearing a hat with the store's old logo on it. And I know it wasn't the co-worker, as I could still hear them in the back, washing dishes. Despite all this, I wasn't worried, as I don't think ghosts mean harm in general anyway. And that's where that story ends. That is amazing um, in terms of just the amount of activity. I do agree with the writer there. It seems like if it was a flesh and blood person uh, not wearing any kind of shoes, that would be problematic. You'd think they would, like they said, they would get caught and uh, told to put on some shoes or escorted out of there. I don't know, but uh, it does seem like the the writer there is pretty logical about how they try to figure everything out and and uh good i'm glad the sound is good um thank you for that and uh so yeah it sounds like there's just activity there and i wonder how often it happens in places where there are larger places this i, I didn't include the name of the store but it is a large it's just it's a chain of stores that where they're all as far as i know they're all usually pretty big um and I wonder how often that happens when things start to get quiet. I wonder if activity picks up in those cases, if, if there's ever anything going on there. And it's easier to spot, or if it's always there, but, but because the rest of the time there's all kinds of people around, um, maybe it goes unnoticed in some cases. Similar thing with um, other places where you have a lot of people moving around and and – and so the place is full and busy. I wonder how often there's activity uh, in in um, in those places as well, like stores or, well, that's stores, but houses um, with big families. Uh, you hear that sometimes where there'll be a big family in, in, the, in the house, and but over time, people will start moving out, and then the people that are left, especially if it's like one or two people, will still be hearing sounds. Um, like there are other people in the house with them, even though they know that those other people have already moved out. And it's, it's the, instead of there, there being five or more people living there, it's only one or two, but you're still hearing and seeing things like apparitions or whatever, or even just hearing things and noticing objects moving. And then there's, there's no reason for it because the people aren't there anymore. So, um, those are always, I always wonder about that with, with, that, with those kinds of things. If you think of stores, I mean, you have all the lights, all that light coming down from just countless lights throughout the store. You have all the, the machines that run everything, um, the coolers, the, the, hot, the, the counters where the hot food is stored. I don't know if those have any kind of electronics built into them to keep the food warm, but... Um, that's still a lot of devices around you know, all the all the 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 registers, just all kinds of things there. That's a lot of energy, so it makes sense there would be possibly some things going on there. Again, a lot of this does seem to this activity, <coughs> excuse me, does seem to be drawn towards places that have energy, and um, so yeah, 
neat neat story there. I don't know how that works, but not definitely not the first uh, account of an experience in a store that I've ever heard, and I'm, not, I'm sure it won't be the last. Um, so I may may have to do a, a show about that at some point. Uh, I've done I've I've had other stories about restaurants as well. Uh, it's it's funny when you think of sort of the idea of a place that is haunted or has activity going on. You think of a uh, a house, or in some cases like a hotel or a hospital. You don't always think of places like stores or offices um, where there's just just ordinary things going on and and people aren't living there, but there's people there either. 24 7 or most of a day and but then sometimes there's only a few so then you have weird things happen um so that that does really seem like as i said before i think there's always been and probably always will be um paranormal unexplained things happening all around the world i don't think there's a place that doesn't or hasn't had activity i think it's always just a matter of who is there to notice it and if they notice it, and then if they want to talk about it, uh, w- once that once something has happened or multiple things have happened, so uh, because to some people this all just doesn't make any sense, and um, they don't like that, so they don't want to focus on it, which I can understand in a way. Uh, but but yeah, so neat story there. I, I think that'll be all for the stories tonight. Um, because there's not a lot of time left in this episode here, but uh, please um, be sure to follow everyone that uh, everyone that is a guest in the show whenever they they join me. Also, I always have links to um, a, a few good friends that have been on the show before. Uh, of course, Michael Strange and Trouble Minds, and then uh, Liam Martin Rohan of the Exile Minds podcast, and then um, uh, Jen, a good friend of the show as well, has been on before many times with me. Um, the Arcane Observer as well. Uh, please follow them through the links I have in every episode description. Also, as uh, um, I always say, and I do mean this, I'm always looking for um, any kind of uh, accounts of experiences you all have had if you want to have them shared on the show. And um, you can remain anonymous. You don't have to, I don't have to use any names. And uh, I can also, we can also uh, leave out any locations, any details that you want to leave out that might be uh, used or easy, m- make it easier to identify where or who you are. Those can be left out because it's not about the, um, about, it's not about those details. It's about the experience. So just want to point that out again. And um, because I think it's important and because I'm always now looking to share those kinds of accounts of experiences. Um, that way you all don't have to just, hear me talking about mine all the time over and over again so uh but i have heard people don't mind that so much so i'm kind of just joking there but um but yeah so thank you all for listening and uh i will talk to you all on the next episode of salcedo paranormal take care